Um, so I wanted to chat for a few minutes. Don't mind this guy over here. Um, he's <laughs> setting up for worship, but uh, I invited Hannah to come hang out. Yes, Hannah Nitz. So Hannah is, <laughs> besides the like stellar I need more dancer, moves. I don't know. Uh, she is a good friend, and so Hannah and I have actually been doing a lot of the, Hannah does all the behind the scenes stuff with Echo Women on Purpose and has for really years, and really I talk her into doing all sorts of things. And it's been interesting, I don't know if you remember, Hannah was on the panel last year. I cried on the panel last year. I think if you were here, you would remember that. People are like, did you speak last year? I was like... No, I wept. I just said a few <laughs> words in between crying. And so God was in the midst of some really radical spiritual transformation in Hannah, and I've gotten to see an up-close uh, view of this, actually, over the last year and have loved every minute of it. And as I've been thinking about our own kind of theme of consume and talking about it, one of the verses that I keep... Um, one second, we're going to trade spots. Uh, I keep going back to, which is actually an odd verse, but it's... It's Mark 15, 38. And I'm going to read the couple of verses before it and a verse after it. And this is Jesus dying on the cross, and Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last breath. And in 38 it says, And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him saw in this way, he breathed his last. He said, Truly this man was the son of God. And I keep going back to this because I think I've just recognized recently what that really meant for the curtain to be torn in two. Before the priest had to, you had to go to the priest. You had to do these sacrifices. You had to go to the priest who would then go into the Holy of Holies on your behalf. And the curtain tearing in two was the uh, representation that we now have full direct access to the creator of the universe. Like this is a big deal. This is amazing and it's the perfect representation that we personally each of us all of us are f have full access to all of God's love and all of God's power and we don't now need somebody more spiritual than ourselves to go on our behalf we get to go directly to God and it's amazing it's genuinely the most fulfilling thing ever and I've tried and we've tried and part of the reason the the, the conference is unconsumed this year is because um, we do obviously get consumed at times with other things but there is genuinely nothing better than experiencing the fullness of God and I've tried all sorts of things and it's nothing is ever as fulfilling and I tell my friends all the time like I have a prayer room that I go to. We do it. At, we have one at First Kansas and I have one at my house. And I always say, like, Jesus makes everything better. And it's not that all of a sudden, like, all my problems are solved. It's that it helps reorient me and understand who God is and he's in control and, and to come to him. But it's so fulfilling and it's so awesome. Now, I have been on this journey for about 10 years where I've just, like, been all in for Jesus. And it's not like religion. It's like, oh, man, Jesus is the best ever. Now, I've walked with <laughs> Hannah since she was 12 and one of my junior hires. That's fine. I'm old. Um, <laughs> and Isn't that cute? 20 years I've been following Noelle around. Yeah, it's a long time. It is a long time. And so as Hannah... Um, so as Hannah's watched even me in my own space, and Hannah and I have become really good friends, uh, Hannah basically thought I was boring. <laughs> and told me to get a life. Okay? <laughs> She's like, go to a party, get a life. Why do you love Jesus so much? And in the last year, there's been some radical transformation even in Hannah's life where now I, say, I send her that text every once in a while. She was hanging out at this party one night, and she comes over, and, I, and it was a really fun party, and everybody was dancing. It was, like, really cool. And she comes over, and I'm like, this party is awesome. And I was like, yeah, isn't it great? We actually, everybody's dancing. Like, this is kind of fun. And she goes, no, I was just over in the corner, and I prayed for that woman. <laughs> and I was like, get alive, right? <laughs> because now I can say it back. But it really is better than anything else. So I actually invited Hannah. This is impromptu somewhat, but just really continued to feel the stirring that Hannah needed to share just a minute, because last year she was crying on the stage, because Gerard was really radically changing her life. And so I asked her just to share for a couple minutes from last year to this year and why that has shifted from me being boring to you now understanding, like, the fullness and the goodness of it. 
Yeah, and I mean, if you're around Noelle, you don't, she doesn't appear boring. But I just thought <laughs> she spends so much time with God because she doesn't enjoy the real fun things in life. <laughs> like, I love Jesus. I accept the gospel. I love this freedom. But I also like to get down. You know what I mean? Like, I also <laughs> like to have fun. I like to go out. I like to laugh too hard. I like to eat too much food. I like to enjoy. And I have Jesus. Like, you can do both. And that was the piece that I just thought, I'm built different from this. <laughs> I could never be as obsessed with God because, like, there's other things I also enjoy. And that's good. I'm still going to heaven. I still love God. There's still goodness in it. So last year when I was up on stage crying, I was on that panel called the It's Not My Plan panel, if you remember, because... God gave me the coolest kid in the world, Harvey, who's going to be two in July. And I just, it wrecked my life. My doing, my giving, my serving is how I had a relationship with God. It was like, you did this amazing thing for me. And in return, it's like YOLO for the kingdom, right? Like, it's like, I got to give. I got to volunteer. I got to do. I got to learn. I got to be in studies. Like, this was my thankfulness and my overflow of God. So then when I had Harvey, if you remember, when that was taken away, I was very confused. Because I was like, God, if my relationship with you is not in this doing, what is it in? One thing that I didn't tell you was on that retreat, I told that story about how God met me in this great way and taught me that I'm not what I do. That he loved me for me and he met me in that, even if I didn't have this sweet career and ministry opportunities anymore. On that retreat... I am just abounding with excitement that I experienced God. And I was like, Noel, this keeps happening in my life. Like, I have a problem, a pain, a brokenness. I engage God. He shows up. This is so cool. And that's how I had interacted with God for my life. It was like I came into God's space when I needed him, when I had a question, when I had a problem, right? Like, this is how I would engage God. And he would show up. And I was telling Noelle, and I was like, don't you want to go on this retreat? Because she was, like, so busy serving all of us. And just between her and me, not in a prideful way, but in a best friend that I've known for 20 years way, she said, I don't need to go on retreats with God because I do this with him every day. And I was like, wait, what? I could have this every day? So I left that retreat, it wrecked my life. I came here two months later, a little premature, I will say, that you put me on the stage <laughs> I at think that we point. should not have put you on the stage. And, I don't wear uh, <laughs> The day after I left this conference, I came home last year and I said, God, if there is more of you, I want it. Why am I just engaging you when there's an issue and a problem? Like the way that Noel engages you, the way that these women engage you, God, I find your Bible a little bit boring. I've heard these stories before. Like, I do my quiet time, and I'm like, eh, I guess the one lesson here is trust in the Lord. And then I move on, and I was like, I'd still rather go to the party. You know what I mean? Like, that quiet time wasn't that much fun. Friends, after this conference last year, for 40 days, I said, God, if I seek you, will I find you? And in that 40 days, God taught me that I did not have a doing problem. It wasn't that I wasn't doing enough or I was doing too much or that my focus was on the kingdom and now it needed to be on a baby. It wasn't a doing problem. It was a desire problem. I desired so many things. Yes, I desired God, but I also wanted you to think I was cool. Yes, I desired God, but I also loved when you came up to me and told me that you followed me on Instagram and you listened to me on Moody Radio. And I was like, the hand, a show. I loved it. And it's like, those things are still good, right? They're kingdom. Like, I desired it. I desired Jesus and. I desired Jesus and a good marriage. I desired Jesus and to still fit in jeans after I had a baby. I desired jeans and to be well-loved. And in that 40 days... God took me to this verse in Psalm 73, 25. There is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. In that 40 days, God asked me to give up a lot of neutral things. They weren't sinful. It was neutral. It was things I desired. It was podcasts because I like to be well-learned. It was pop culture because I love to know what was going on in the world. It was being on Instagram all the time so that people could see that I was doing kingdom work. All of these things that I love that were not sinful, 
God said, is this true? Is it the only thing on earth I desire is you? Friends, those 40 days, at the end of it, I was really ready for him to give me more doing, and instead he gave me more desire. I was really ready for him to be like, and now here's the perfect job that I have for you. And instead he said, I want more of your heart. And it's awesome! It is like the best! I now understand why Noel is so weird. And guys, it's for all y'all! Like, the coolest thing is in this desire, I am a fun chaser. I've always been one. I want to be near fun or creating fun. And that's why I didn't always have time for quiet time with God. The sitting in a big comfy chair with a book propped open with your coffee being like, Jesus time. I was like, that's nice, but that's not the most fun I could have today. And guys, what Laura was talking about, about Zoe life, is real. And it's like, God, as I am engaging him, it's not the doing. It's not that I need to do more. It's that a desire. It's a surrender. It's saying, God, I want more. I was just at this um, vacation with my husband's side of the family, and it was really great. It was this all-inclusive resort, bougie, very nice. And it had everything you could imagine. And I was in the pool with Caleb, my husband, and I was like, babe, this resort is reminding me of God. He was like, what? <laughs> and I said, you know the lobby of this resort? It's this huge, it's kind of like this, this huge arch room. And it had these nice waterfalls through the middle of the lobby. And it was, it smelled good. It had like diffusers going. And it had this huge plate of chocolate chip cookies the size of my child's face. It had cucumber water and like anything you could want. These big comfy couches. And I was like, I was at this resort, and I was in the lobby, and this is what I thought God was. I was like, do you see the waterfalls? There's couches, there's cookies, like they're warm cookies. It has these big arches, like isn't God awesome? And I just stayed there for the past 20 years, because this is what I knew that God was. And I said to Caleb, I didn't know there's a whole resort and it's free, and it's all-inclusive, and it's food, more than cookies, and it's drinks, and it's pools, and it's oceans, and it's beaches, and it's playing, and it's games, and it's like, there's so much fun, there's so much joy, there's so much fulfillment, and I was in the stupid lobby thinking, this is all there is to God. Guys, there is more. This message isn't just for the woman who's like, I'm currently dealing with something or struggling or broken. That truth is for this woman too, but it is for every woman. If you are a believer, you have as much of God as you want. Friends, to start with that desire, you will end up as crazy as Noel. <laughs> because time with God every day is now the greatest thing I look forward to. And I would have made fun of that person up and down for the last 10 years, saying, truly, you haven't experienced the best that there is. It's God! I didn't know! No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know, and it's amazing! The number of times that Hannah sends me a text in the last year that's like, God, you were right the whole time. Do you know God is so good? I'm like, I did, actually. Just personally <laughs> engaging him, Every day is bomb, and yes. I just didn't know it for so long. Yes. Just it, thought it was the boring introverts who did that, you know what I mean? <laughs> Me and Audrey Wallace got to throw these big New Year's Eve parties. We don't got time for God every day. No, we do. It's amazing. <laughs> You're all invited, by the way. New Year's Eve, Wallace. <laughs> New Year's Eve. Uh, yes. So, Because <laughs> I do still like some parties, but it's she, just... They there's, were all compliments to me just a minute ago. There's so much more, Noel. There's, there's so much more for every woman. And even again, as Laura was saying, this knowing God, this is eternal life. It's not waiting for heaven. It's today, at home, with you and Jesus. He says that is the best thing on the planet. And for the first time, I believe him. Yeah. It, Woo! So exciting! <laughs> I'm just amped about it. I want everyone to know it. Woo! Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> so this is why I wanted Hannah to share, because she has had a major transformation. And some of you may be thinking, like, well, the Bible is boring, but I'm just trying. I want to go back to the curtain is torn. We have full access to the creator of the universe who will crazy. interact that's crazy. with us. We interact with him, and he interacts back. And I think that that's the most astounding thing ever. It's like the best backstage pass ever. And sometimes we still choose to sit all the way back in the you know, balcony. Yeah, you know what I was thinking of when you used that example of Tim living in another state? Yes. A lot of my relationship with God, it was like that, like a spouse living far away. And whenever I missed God... It was like putting in a wedding video. Like, it was like I would go back to, like, the gospel. He saved me. He did nothing. Or he did everything. I did nothing. Like, I had this wedding video, this, like, the gospel. The day Caleb and I got married. Like, the day I came to know Jesus, and I would replay it and be like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. And I didn't know that I could engage in something new in God every day. Yes. And there's a whole resort out there. It's not just the lobby. It's not, just, it's not just the lobby. So we want to continue to invite you into that. There's something that Hannah and I have done a handful of times together, and I've done some on my own. It's called Spiritual Boot Camp. So you'll get... My crew has gone through it. Uh, anyways, it's five simple rhythms of how to have intimacy with God. Essentially, none of it's super like rocket science, none of it's like new theology or some like thing that you're like, oh, I've never heard of that. It's actually a lot of practical things of how do you engage God in kind of these five ways, through worship, through the gospel, through hearing him, through prayer, and through uh, scripture. And so just kind of walking you through that, and Hannah and I are going to do another one for Akron on Purpose Ladies, um, where I kind of give the 10 years down the road examples, and Hannah reminds me I'm that hot I, out the kitchen. I'm like, brand new. <laughs> yes. So anyways, God invites us into all these things because he wants relationship with us. He doesn't need us to do things and to serve him. He wants relationship with us. And we've been talking about this with a handful of people in regards to God uh, really invites us as kids in the kitchen, right? Our you know, uh, kids aren't always the most helpful, but we don't invite them in because they're gourmet chefs. We invite them in because they, we want relationship and we want connection. And that's what God does. And I remember having this conversation with Hannah at our rest retreat and saying, like, God doesn't need you to serve him and to do things. He just wants to be, I keep asking God for adventures. He just wants to be on an adventure with you. And he invites us into these things. And sometimes that's for him and for his glory. But ultimately it's for relationship with us, for us to grow in intimacy with him. And so I say this to Hannah and Hannah goes, I really thought I was the gourmet chef, <laughs> not, not the five-year-old. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry to tell you, you're actually the five-year-old, and that's okay. God invites us in because he wants relationship with us. And even as we were talking earlier, man, you, some of you thank me for, for helping host this event, and I really genuinely feel like, please don't thank me. Like, God just lets me do this. I literally, during worship, was like, can, can you believe God lets us do this? I cannot believe it. So I'm so thankful for a creator who loves us, wants a relationship with us, and then invites us into adventures. And I just keep asking God, like, what adventure are we going on today, God? What adventure are we going on today? And it's a conference a with 760 women. That was your adventure today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, so we are grateful for you to just be part. And if you hear us talk about spiritual boot camp, feel free to sign up. There's no pressure on that. We just really are passionate about seeing people enter into kind of this full relationship that God has to yeah, offer. There's so much more. There's so much There's more. There's so much more. So